Hello YouTube friends. It's nice to be with you again. Well, today something very exciting happened because I went out uh, to the front of my house and discovered that a package had arrived last night from FedEx from the Spinnery store. That's the name of that store, that um, an online store that I wanted to mention to you. I ordered a little bit of fiber, not a pile of fiber, not big bags of fiber. Um, I discovered last time when I ordered from Shep's Wool that a little fiber goes a long way. And uh, matter of fact, let me pause for just a second and I'll show you what I have left. All that I have left that I ordered from Shep's Wool is this little bit of that cinnamon. Um, even this goes a long way. I think when I ordered from Shep's Wool, I ordered a good many bags of four ounces. This time from the spinnery store, I only ordered single ounce packages and they look really small. They look like this, <laughs> they look teeny, but they've really been compressed into these little plastic packages. And so today we're gonna open these up and look at them and feel them and see what we think about the texture of the different types that I ordered. But the thing okay. that I realized I loved was when I was working on my sweater, which I have here, I did a couple rows yesterday, a few rows, but I still have a long way to go. I have a friend who doesn't knit who asked me, oh, how did your sweater turn out? I was like, oh, honey, it takes more than a day. Um, but as I was looking, and I talked about these colors before, um, I just realized how much I enjoyed the blending of the colors. Uh, you can buy fiber um, that is already blended, and we'll see some of that today, and you can buy some that is not, and I prefer to get ones that aren't and do the blending myself. Last time I did the blending on this hackle, and that was a lot of fun, um, and you throw it on there, and I can link to a video where I did that, and you um, throw the fiber on there, the various colors, and then you pull it off, and it is, and, and I find that very peaceful and fun, but I would love to learn how to uh, blend my fiber colors on cards. And I'm wondering, I haven't seen anybody do that. I don't know why it couldn't be done. So I'm gonna figure out a way to do that. Okay, so looks, let's look at what we got. I got seven different, hang on. Oh, and you'll notice it is definitely time for candles. The high, the high yesterday was only 78. Now this is only gonna last a few days, but, um, and then the high today is like 81. So it's cooler. But uh, so I have this candle going. This is a Bar Company Blossom scent. It's a very faint flowery scent, very nice. And this is an old, it's an old candle holder. I think my brother made it. This is one of our beeswax candles that Adam made years ago. And we have a few of those left. This might be the last one. Isn't that pretty? Anyway, um, so let me show you what I got first. I got two ounces of this, and I really don't know why. This is English Luster. It's a heather. This is already blended, although you could certainly take it and blend it with some other colors. I'm going to pull these all out of these bags so we can see how much they expand once they come out. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot. That's a lot. Look at that. Oh, look at that color. That's beautiful. I'm not certain, but I think I remember my friend Lynn telling me that the, the luster was a little scratchier. But that heather was so pretty, I couldn't resist. And I think that this was pretty cheap compared to the others. They were all on sale. Um, these little one ounce ones, these one ounce packages were all $2.99. And I think that was a two ounce, it was like $3.29. Um, and my friend Lynn told me that if I could get an ounce of already colored and cleaned fiber that was ready to turn into Rolex, if I could get that for less than $5 an ounce, that was a good price. So that was a ballpark. That's one of those little pieces of information that she gave me that was so helpful. Okay, so this is Lester. So I'm going to feel that. Actually, it's good to take it and put it up against your throat so that, you know, if I made this into a sweater or a scarf, this is what it's going to feel like on my, my, my neck. And that is a little scratchy. Um, some people are very sensitive to scratchy wool. 
I don't think I'm a very sensitive person, but everybody likes it to feel good. Okay, now here's a one ounce. Let's see what it does when it comes out. Actually, this stuff is already in roving, in thick roving. You could technically spin from this if you were really good at doing that. I could probably spin from that, except that I want it blended with other colors, and I'll show you about that. Okay, so this is Coriadale. Coriadale is supposed to be one of those soft ones. Okay, so let's do this. I think it feels about the same as the Lester to me. I may, you know, my neck skin may be a lot like my eating palate. Not very uh, sensitive, <laughs> not very discerning, <laughs> not very discriminating. <laughs> but, okay, there's, this is um Colonial Raspberry. And once I get these out of these packages, there's no way I'm getting them back in. That's fine. I'll probably put them in a bigger bag. We have, we get these things called food bags. They don't have zippers on the top. Um, and they're great for putting bread in. They're great for putting all kinds of leftover food in, rice or whatever. And they're not as thick or heavy. They're better than a Walmart bag, a grocery bag. But they are, matter of fact, let me go get one because I'm going to put these in anyway. Now, if you live in the U.S., this is the Great Value Walmart brand. Um, just says twist tie storage. I think they're a gallon size. Um, they're a good size. They're really nice, big, but not too big. The reason I like to keep uh, my fiber like these in bags is so that it um, doesn't get dusty as it sits around for months and months and months in my studio. Okay, now the only one I bought that is already blended, color blended, is this one. This is Organic Flames. I love pulling them out. I love how much bigger they get once you pull them out. How do they get them in there? This. See, this is the... Actually, I like to get some blended so I can see what a good blend is supposed to look like. What does it have in it? And um, this is all red and orange. See how all the fibers are already going the same direction. They're really beautiful. Yeah, you could spin from this directly. Oh, that's so pretty. And for people who, for people who just want to spin, make yarn, and knit, they don't want to go through all the muck of fiddling with the fiber in its raw state. This is really what you want. So you can just go, if you spin a lot, you can go straight to spinning and be happy, happy, happy. This is Merino. Now that I can tell a difference. There is no scratch. That's interesting. Yeah, there is no scratch. There's just a little bit of scratch with that. This little bit of irritation. This is softer. Uh, none of this was labeled as superwash. Now, superwash would be um, wool that you could, it's already been treated so that it won't felt in the washer. I didn't get any of that. Okay, this is, now the rest of these are all, wait, maybe that one was too. It doesn't say so. The rest of these are all, I suppose, it says Ashland Bay. I'm assuming that is the, I don't know what that is, Ashland Bay. I don't remember seeing that on their um, description of these products. This, oh, I fell in love with this color. I do love color. See, people, I think there's a reason why people who love to paint and people who love to work with fiber, um, there's, there's a lot of overlap there because I love color. Color almost has a flavor to me. Oh, this is a beautiful, oh, see, I don't know if the camera's going to pick up. When I'm looking at this and I'm looking in the camera, I see two radically different colors. This is kind of a gray blue. It's a stormy sky blue. If you think of a very stormy day with heavy storm clouds, the bottoms of those clouds that are really, really gray, dark gray, that's what this looks like. It's got a steeliness of beautiful blue. Boy. Hmm. Okay. So there's that. Now, see, I'm thinking, I think that, I, I want to get colors that I could all blend together. These two together would be nice. I could, because they both have kind of a, now I would never, well, I don't know. 
I could see flecks of this. If this were blended with something else, I could see little flecks of this in there. Um, I could really see that blue blended with this color. Um, I wanted lots and lots of possibilities. Okay, let's put that to the side. See, this is one of those food bags. Actually, I think I'll go ahead and put this one. I'm gonna keep the slightly scratchy ones together. That would be this one. The Lester Heather and the Raspberry Coriadale. And then the new bag we will put, now this, the name of this one was Horizon. This is Horizon. I, do, I like to keep the names straight in case you want to go to the spinnery store online. And I will put a link in the description to that. If you want to go there, you'll be able to find those colors perhaps easily and know that you're getting what you're seeing here. Oh, this is so soft. Mmm, I'm very excited. Okay, another blue. I got two blues. I do like blue. I like blue and pink. It's hardly a color. I even, I love orange. Um, as long as it's not a bright, garish orange, you know what I mean? Oh, this is a dark. Yeah, on the, in real life, this is even darker than that. Um, oh, that's really nice. So soft. I can't wait to blend some of this and spin it. It, it look, oh, after you blend it, then it's like edible. I mean, uh, I've, it, it's just so delicious to look at. I'll post some pictures maybe of some of um, the, the fiber that I blended last time. And when it was sitting in that bowl, it looked like cotton candy kind of thing. I, um, and I almost hated to, um, to spin it up because once you spin it and you twist it into this tight, thin yarn, it loses the fluffy gorgeousness. Um, I got these two blues because I thought they would really be nice together. Then if you had a little pop of that in there, mm, just little flecks of orange running through there. Doesn't that sound fun? Okay. I can't wait to blend these on my combs. On my, um, not my combs, what am I talking about? Um, I don't have combs. Combs is what I would love to have. Combs, combs are, you can picture something smaller than this, but with tines that stick up about four inches, five inches. Okay, they're tall and thick, and there's just like maybe 20 of them or something, or 30, I don't know how many, but not 100. Um, and they have short handles, and you can mount them on your desk with a vice kind of thing, a clamp. And um, so when you mount them on your desk, then they kind of perform like a hackle, okay? But they come in pairs. So after you have practiced, after you've practiced, you learn how to function with them in pairs. And so they kind of work together like two hand carters, but they're structured more like a hackle. And um, you can just, anyway, that's how I've seen people blending and combing and all that kind of thing more one of these days. They're really expensive. The Carters were cheaper, and honestly, I have really enjoyed the Carters. Now, I only got one. Oh, no, I got the raspberry. Yes, here's a pink. Now, I thought this pink and that raspberry would be a nice combo, too, with something else in there. Maybe the last one. Mm, isn't that beautiful? Oh, so pretty. See, the thing is that also, that, that'll be, that would be pretty with some of the, the raspberry would kind of be a, a color in between these two because it's dark like this, but it's pink like this. Um, I'm afraid I'm gonna torch up my fiber if I get it too close to those candles. The last color I got is different, more different yet, because <clears throat> I love this color. This is olive.
And I thought this, you know, you wouldn't want to make this your main show, but this would make a nice contrast. It would be a dark green running through other things. Green like this goes really well. I wouldn't put it with the blue. It would get lost. But it go really well with the pink. You could even still have a splattering of this in there. Um, so this will probably be the color like that cinnamon that I have left over um, at the end, but use a lot. And this will be a lot like the goldenrod from last time uh, that you kind of see consistently through everything. Um, and then again, of course, I have the blue. I got a lot of blue last time too. Okay. Oh, and they sent me this. Now, I don't know what this is. I haven't opened it up yet. This was just a little packet. There was no receipt or any nothing from the company in that bag. And I thought, well, yeah. So they've sent me some little happies. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here's a sticker. Want to save money? Shop our new website. Well, that's the truth. Everything there was on sale. I don't know where I'm supposed to put that sticker, but I'll think about it. And they sent me a their business card. And a sticker from my refrigerator. Actually... I'll do that. I don't have anything in my studio it'll stick to. Now, ooh, they sent me three happies. They sent me a little packet of sari silk threads. These are things that you can incorporate into your, um, look at that, isn't that fun? This is silk. And you can incorporate it into your color blending when you do your color. Uh, when you blend your, your fiber. And then they sent me two other ones. Let me see what this says. They wrote on these bags. Organic Merino Purple Onion Exclusive. This is an exclusive for them. I'll, I'll pull it out. This must be a quarter of an ounce or something. I don't know. But it's enough to make a difference. Oh, that's pretty. This is a plum. They're calling it Purple Onion. Yeah, I guess that works like a little onion. And then this is organic jeans is the color. They looked at what I ordered. They or realized I was ordering blues and uh, pink tones. And so they sent me an additional blue. This is very, very similar to that um, Horizons blue. A little different though, boy. Now see, I like the store. I like Shep's Wool. I think it's a bigger store. Um, but they sent me what I ordered. They did great. It came in a timely fashion, but they didn't send me little happies. <laughs> I really like the little happies. Um, so anyway, fun, fun. I think I will probably order from the spinnery store again. I'm, I don't know. I like to shop around. I want to support everybody. All right. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was I did get all of this horrible, horrible um, yarn off of my spinning wheel. I want to remind you again what I did wrong on this that really kind of, as far as I understand it, cannot be corrected. I tried to ply two yarns um, that had been spun in opposite directions. The white was, uh, I was just hypothetically say it was an S twist and the pink was a Z twist. And um, when you try to twist them together, no matter which direction you go, one of them will try to twist and one of them will try to stay straight. And um, so I think I will, I'm going to put this onto my um, Nitty Knotty, put it into a skein and save it and weave with it and make something with it. I don't know what. Um, but I'm not going to incorporate that into my sweater. All of it is very thin. This must have been pretty early in my spinning. It's even possible that I spun this on my antique wheel when I was really bad. But all of it is very thin. Most of it is very over twisted. It's too twisty. Actually, it was kind of nice to go. Um, see, it's just it's just like that. This would have been if it had if it had been twisted correctly. That would have been a good sock yarn. But the yarn that I'm using for my sweater is at the thinnest like this and uh, the thickest is really bulky and I want that for a big heavy cardigan which is what I want this to be. I want this to be the wool cardigan that I wear for years um, and so I'm really I, I'm being careful as I go down I'm working the pattern down from the top down I want to make sure 
but I stop and take the arm hole openings off when I have the arm opening way down. I don't want anything up here constraining. I don't want it to, I don't want it to have a fitted feel at all because I am all about comfort in my clothing. Okay, so wasn't that exciting? Blend well, I may, I may go ahead and blend a little bit though. I just want to see how to blend on my, on my hand carters and I will include that uh, also in this video. Okay, after looking online very briefly, I did discover that yes, it is possible to um, blend on your cards, of course. So, the lady there, it's important not to lay the ends of your fiber way up here, because then they get all compressed along the top of these tines, so you really, if you can, especially with this nice fiber, you want to try to get the ends to start down a little bit from the top. This is really separating very easily. Now, I don't want to blend this so that the three colors I put on here become a fourth different color that's all homogenous. I want the yarn that I end up with to still have lots of different I want to be able to see the individual colors. So I want a, I want a loose blend. Oh wow, that's great. Oh, you can tell that it's a different sheet. The staple is longer. It's harder to pull through. It's just, it, it acts very different from the merino. Wow, that's interesting. As you would expect. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Fun, fun, fun. Okay, I think I need a little bit more of the light blue. Okay. And we'll try carding this and see what we now the thing is I don't I'm not trying to remove BM from it. Um and I'm not trying to comb it in the right direction either. All I am is blending the colors, so I don't really want to overwork this. The lady on the video said to pull it off just to kind of do kind of a scooping and lifting motion. You can see that really worked while well, this stuff is fly away. I don't really have to do much here. I'm going to go ahead take that off there. Take that off there. Take it onto the back. She wadded hers up in a little ball. I do not like that. I like working from a roll lag, so I'm going to I folded those over. And um, I'm going to roll this up. Oh, that's just so pretty. I just had to stop for a minute and show you the lusciousness of what's on this carter. How I'm just in the middle of this little, I'm in the middle of this little particular patch. Here's the other card. But I just wanted to show you why this feels so much like painting to me because of the blend of colors. 
Just lovely. I've made six Rolags and here they are. The color is a little bit darker and bluer than it seems that it's showing up on here. There's so much brightness coming in the window this morning, which is lovely, but it makes that look quite pale when it's not. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little better. I love the pops of orange. There's not a lot in there, but just a little bit on some dark blue and the raspberry. That'll be so much fun to spin. Well, I'm spinning up this lovely new fleece I've got. It's spinning up darker than I would have expected, considering that so much of it is that light colored blue. Um, it's very twisty. I mean, really... It's very twisty as I'm, I'm trying to pedal, treadle very slowly to keep the twist out and I've turned my tension up so it'll pull in faster, but it is pretty twisty. Um, and it's lovely. See how dark it is? I'm not really getting a lot of the pops of orange. They're in there a little bit. Maybe you can see some of it right there. So I'm, I'm gonna do, um, three more Rolags after this, and then I'll probably go ahead and chain ply it and see how it turns out. Oh, just those rich, rich tones. All the stuff that looks kind of pale and white here is actually beautiful silvery blue. I'm so excited to be spinning this up. Also, I know this is silly. I just love the, the look of the roll leg, that rounded over fiber. There's something so beautiful about it, and I'm not really sure what it is. I must have fiber in my jeans. Here's six roll legs of that new fiber, and look at all the variation in there. You can see the smoky silvery blue, you can see the dark blue, you can see the raspberry, and you can see that pop of orange. And then you can see all the colors that they make when they combine so much that they aren't separated. Very fun. Now you see, um, this did not fill up this bobbin. I'm hoping that when I chain ply this, which is a triple ply, that I'll be able to fit it all back on this bobbin. I don't know why I shouldn't be able to. Um, but, um, yeah, when I say chain ply or triple ply, I mean that I'm going to, the final yarn is going to be three thicknesses of this. This is one thickness, but it'll be three thicknesses. So I'm itching to see what that's going to look like. And as a reminder to all you spinners out there who don't want to do the terrible mistake I did, I did my spinning of this yarn to the right. So I'm going to do my plying to the left. I put in a Z twist going in, and I'm going to do an S twist on my ply. And it filled up the bobbin quite nicely, just as much as it was before, which is a little mystery because when I do that off-white, well, it doesn't do that. <laughs> but it makes sense that the same amount of um, single ply would take up the same amount of space if you triple plied it. So I'm going to take this off of here, wet finish it, and see what it looks like. Now it's on my nitty knotty, and you can see this is not a ton of yarn. Six row legs um, just makes just a bit, um, but some of this is so fun. Look at that. I think what I really do like, I don't like a black and white barber pole look, but I do like when you have contrasting colors like that. I like that a lot better than I like that. I really like this. I love the pop of orange, although I don't know that I'd want it all to be poppy orange. <laughs> 